Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. Here is yet another Vlogmas video. This one in which I'm going to talk about my favorite podcasts of 2019, relate back my favorite episodes and why they, as a result, are my favorite podcasts of the year. I honestly didn't listen to that many podcasts this year. I really listened to a lot of audiobooks instead. I feel like I really listened to a lot of podcasts last year, but I still listen to a lot of things this year and there's a lot of new things that I listened to this year too. And I wanted to make a video telling you all about them. Probably my favorite podcast of the year is the Ringer Dish and specifically the tea time episodes that they do. It's got three really funny ladies who do tea time usually. It's a pop culture based podcast mostly focusing on celebrity culture but it does it in a way that feels very like 2019. It's very um, internet-y feeling. They live on the internet and they basically live my life and they have a lot of interesting thoughts when it comes to celebrity culture. Like for example they're the people that I listened to when I did not understand whatsoever the Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy controversy and like how one of them knew that it was the other one leaking information about them because they only posted their Instagram story to be available to one person that they suspected and I like I read like four articles and I did not understand what that story was talking about until I listened to Tea Time explain it all and then I was like oh now it makes sense. And they did it in a really funny way that explains like the popularity of soccer wives and soccer girlfriends. They also have done lots of interesting podcast episodes about Meghan Markle and kind of how she is treated by the tabloid press in the UK. It's not something that I ever really think about when it comes to like the royal family. I always kind of feel like you're so rich, like what does it matter? It's interesting to see how they defend the royal family from the lack of privacy that they have. And I've learned quite a bit about the tabloid press in the UK. Whenever the Tea Time ladies talk about the cats trailers that have come out, I have laughed out loud just from the way that they describe like these cats with these bosoms and like tails coming out and like the CGI is a little bit too intense and I totally agree and the way that they describe it cracks me up. Probably my favorite podcast episode that they've made this year is one where they've talked about One Direction. They did a full like post eight years of One Direction power rankings of how all of the five original members have fared since One Direction has been disbanded. I actually agreed with their rankings and I didn't think that I would because they didn't put Louis at number five and super into One Direction me from seven years ago or whatever would have put Louis V. Very fascinating to see how it's actually panned out because we thought Zayn would be number one for sure and we thought Liam would be really up there as well. We thought Niall would be really down on that ranking and it's all flipped turned upside down. I thought that they were very fair in that podcast. I also just really like that the ladies are of a variety of ages. There's one that's even younger than me and then the other two I believe are older than me so they're kind of of the same age as I so when I'm listening to this it does feel like I'm listening to friends my age talking about celebrity culture like we would. Another awesome new podcast that I found this year is called Detective Trap. It's almost finished. It has one more episode to go. It's only a five episode podcast by the same people who did Dirty John, so Wondery and the LA Times. It's the same narrator. It's been fascinating to see a brand new story. In this one we're following a homicide detective called Julissa Trap, both learning about her life and her her personal life, where she grew up, kind of her parents' expectations for her and what job she would have, and her defying those expectations, how she's made it kind of like in a man's world, in the detective world, and how good she is in interrogations, but also learning more about her personal life in the sense of her trying to have children, her getting married, having kind of religious doubts as a result of her issues with fertility. And then that goes hand in hand with what the, the podcast is actually about, which is basically looking into someone who has been killing multiple women in Anaheim. A lot of them were women from different other states that were coming to the LA area to kind of have a new life and basically were very vulnerable. She thought that possibly it might have been a serial killer and turns out that she's kind of right in that way even though everybody was kind of doubting her. So now she is going to find out who did this. It happened in real life in 2013 and I've never heard of the story so it's completely fascinating to learn 
how she went through it from beginning to end and then to also learn about her life and if you're into any true crime podcast i definitely recommend it another podcast that has still been very very good is was one of my favorites last year is the popcast the new york times popcast and it is a pop culture and music based podcast by the new york times one main person which is john caramonica and then he has kind of like the same band of like three or four people that he brings in as well as guests and they talk about different things going on in the music world. I like them because they don't take themselves so seriously. The podcast seems very casual and like friends chatting. Also calls back to different things. The humor is very good in it so it calls to different things that have been going on in our world. And some of my favorite podcasts this year that they've made, one about Taylor Swift versus Scooter Braun and um, Scott Porchetta and what's been going on with Big Machine Records and her like leaving Big Machine Records and not having any of her masters basically. They kind of delved into all of that in, in a way that I feel like was very much down the middle to see faults in both arguments. They also did one on Lil Nas X and country rap in history because people want to think that country rap was never a thing before Lil Nas X and before Old Town Road and uh Country rap has always been a thing, basically, is what they were arguing. They were showing you different um, sounds of that as well. One of them is Sam Hunt, who I really enjoy, and I agree. He's kind of like country rap or like country hip-hop. He doesn't really fit that mold. They went back decades to find different people who have been doing this kind of thing that Lil Nas X has been. They did an awesome episode about Michael Jackson's legacy. They've kind of done a lot of heavier episodes because one of the people who's on the podcast is a New York Times reporter so it takes sometimes more of a journalistic stance instead of like a critical critic stance. So they talked a lot about Michael Jackson and the documentary that came out on HBO and like really looking into you know decades of allegations. Can you separate the art from all of the things that have to do with the personality and the actions of the artist? And that is always an interesting conversation for me. Like I still don't really listen to Chris Brown. And they also did another one in the same vein about Ryan Adams, which was fascinating. I didn't grow up listening to Ryan Adams, but it's interesting to think about like Mandy Moore being involved with him and like underage girls being involved with him and how the New York Times kind of exposed all of that and now he's not doing so well as a result. And lastly, I wanted to talk about The Daily, which still is making really great content. Their like production value is top notch. When I listen to The Daily, I'm going there for like more in-depth conversations. Whenever I just want like regular news, I can just listen to like the NPR up first. But this one is a lot more like let's look into the issue for 20-25 minutes instead of let's give you five things to talk about in five minutes. They did a really awesome podcast about Kamala Harris and this was before she dropped out of the race but they were kind of talking about why she's taking such a turn and asked people you know why they weren't supporting her as much as you know it was originally thought that they would because of how many people went to her first rally to announce her candidacy for president and to see kind of how that's all changed now their qualms with her like ideas about authenticity fascinating way to look at her whole campaign in like 25 minutes and to see kind of how like it went up and started going down and this was weeks and weeks before she actually dropped out this week. They did a podcast about capitalism in Chile and how that was on trial and why all the protests were happening in Chile. I kind of didn't understand why they were protesting or what was going on, what was the context, and this podcast really explained that to me. And they had someone there talking to people on the ground, explaining kind of like all of the policies that led to this. It took the Twitter videos that I was watching and, and gave them context and made me understand what was going on in Chile. And the last little podcast that they did that I wanted to mention was called A Third Grader's Guide to in the Impeachment Inquiry. So that was a really fun one actually because it's just fun to hear like a little child saying all these big words and like having these very interesting insightful questions and they basically interviewed this kid who wanted to learn more about the impeachment but none of his friends really wanted to talk about it. They brought him to the New York Times building and had him interview one of the reporters that should know a lot so that he could pose these questions and to have the journalist answer them in a way that helped him understand the impeachment inquiry a little bit better 
and in turn help us as consumers of the podcast understand the impeachment inquiry a little bit better. Those are four podcasts that I've really enjoyed this year. Please let me know in the comments what podcast you've been listening to. I kind of want to listen to more. I just, I feel lost. Like there's a lot of oversaturation in the podcast app. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.